Look at the size of these things. Don't they look like, they look like great big minnows. <laughs> Don't they? Look at that thing. <laughs> what, it, the only thing is they're hard to get a handle on. No, I know, but yeah, because of the shape of them, they're really sort of hard to hold. Let's get this guy off, but boy, they're just a, oh, come here, buddy. Oh boy, there we go. Just a gorgeous fish though. They really are, they're just amazingly beautiful. Look at how thick bodied yeah. that thing is. Look at that thing, <laughs> it's beautiful, aren't they? Look at that thing. Look at the coppery color. I'm not kidding you. Smoke, smoked white fish. There you go, you wanna take this yeah, guy I'll into the pen? You know, there's a variety of different baits uh, to catch whitefish dependent on where they're at. Right now we're fishing in deep water, so we need a heavy bait. This is a flat jig designed by Rapala. This is a new profile bait, but uh, jigging wraps work as well. But what you need is a heavy bait that has a small profile to it. And that's what this flat jig is really designed for, is deep water and, or current. You know what the cool thing about this fish species, the white fish, is they bite on so many different lures. They bite on uh, the flat jig, the jig and wrap, they'll hit a rip and wrap, they'll hit soft plastics, they'll hit crankbaits, you know, which is pretty cool when, when you're a fisherman, they like to bite a lot of different lures. With this flat jig or a jigging wrap, this presentation, a lot of times what you do is you dr just drop it directly to the bottom. A lot of times, I mean, oh, there was a high one right there. Um, with this flat jig or a jigging wrap, how you fish the bait, you can drop it to the bottom. Right now we're in 44 feet of water. This bait just plummets. It's a very, very heavy bait, but you pop it, but then you just hold the bait absolutely still. And what you're doing is trying to do like a little attracting maneuver and then just hold the bait still and that'll sort of bring them into the bait. And generally they'll hit it when the bait is, you're not really popping the bait, it's just sitting there. So check this out, we're in 45 foot of water. Watch how long it takes for this bait to get down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven seconds and you're on the bottom fishing. 45 foot of water. One thing about any type of like deep water fishing, Especially when you got any amount of wind, it's really critical is your boat control and how I'm moving with the trolling motor because what I'm trying to do is just offset the speed of the boat so the baits aren't drifting way away from us because when the baits get way away from you, you don't know where your bait, bait is at in relation to the water column. There we go. I think so. I was going to say, we just yeah. came all across them. Oh, pull, come on, come on, come on. A whole bunch Did of them. They come loose. He yes, got off. he came loose. A lot of times what you're gonna do is reel the bait like in five foot increments, drop it to the bottom, start reeling it up and I'll jig for a little bit like if I'm five foot off the bottom right now. Now I'm gonna reel it up five more feet, jig for a little bit more. Most of these fish have been within about 15 feet of the bottom so I'm gonna sequence or cycle in those five foot increments and now I'm gonna drop it back down to the bottom again. You know, these fish are so mobile. They can be anywhere in the water column from the surface all the way down to 50 feet. So when Jim's talking about checking the water column, you're checking it vertically, north, south, from the bottom up. You know what I mean? You drop it to the bottom, work that level. Reel it up 10 foot, work that level. Reel it up another 10 foot, work that level. Then you go back down to the bottom and you start over again like a typewriter. A lot of times what I'll do is I'm actually not fishing just ra randomly. What we're trying to do is really isolate where a fish is at. And you can see there's one right there. So what I'm gonna do is actually just drop it right on top of his head. And I'll just hold the bait just, you know, at water, you know, at the surface until I run over the top of one. And then what I'm gonna do with the Minn Kota is actually just try to hold the boat in that exact position. In this particular unit, I actually have spot lock so I can hit spot lock and the trolling motor is more or less going to hold us in that exact position so we're just going to sit on top of that fish.
While Jim is fishing off of that transducer on the front uh, Minn Kota, I'm fishing off the transducer in the back corner here. So I'll drop this right to the bottom, keep my eye on the electronics. If I see a fish, I know I'm in the ballpark and I, sometimes I can watch my bait. Yeah, this is really fun fishing. It's sight fishing, but not in a traditional sense. You're using your electronics. You see the fish, you drop to them, and nine times out of 10, they, they nail it. Oh, there it's he is. It's just as fun as topwater fishing. <laughs> Saw him. Oh, yeah. Oh. Ooh. That's where the soft action rod, you can see how that, they got that real delicate mouth, and that's where this longer, softer action rod's really key. You're using relatively light line, six pound test, Suffolk Siege in a really good drag. You'll notice that I have this drag set really lightly because otherwise you've got too stiff of a rod. You have the tendency to really uh, pull the hooks out of the fish's mouth a lot. Come here, buddy. Boy, they are, they are Boston Bulldogs though, mm -hmm. aren't they? Yeah. Look at that guy. He's not liking the whole deal. <laughs> Look yeah. at it. They don't Look give up it. easy until no, they get up I know. by the side it's of the boat. Like... Boy, this guy here, I don't know. Holy mackerel. This thing I like about this ballistics drag, it's got that really high pitched, and you can tell it, and you can hear it. It does click, you know, it's. You can tell we're really where you're at. Hear it, hear it squealing. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> oh, this one here. I put that uh, that small flat jig on. I had that bright sort of a parrot colored one and caught a number of fish on it. And then I, I trimmed down to a little bit smaller profile bait wow look at that guy because we weren't getting bites so i put a little bit smaller bait on this uh this one here and got a bite wow gosh these things are fun though it really is you know these fish are actually really commercially fished in a lot of different places around the country you know in the great lakes but not a lot of people actually fish for them with rod, Ooh, here he comes, here rod he comes. and line, and that's a mistake, I think. Look at that. It really is. Wow. Lake trout. Wow. Laker. Laker. Lake Surprise trout. Surprise bonus. Yeah, I was gonna. I said you were, yeah. the, you were the lake trout king, and yeah. you are the lake trout king. Look at that. <laughs> Come here, buddy. That's the first Laker I've caught this year. I like how that. Jim is the lake trout king, so yeah. this is right in his wheelhouse. Yeah. Wait, look at that guy there. Look at that. You want to box that one too if we're going to do a smoke job? If you want to keep them, yeah, they'd be good eating. Look at that lake trout. You can see that this guy there. Hmm. Sort of an interesting looking animal, isn't he? <laughs> Look at that. 